Welcome back fellow aircraft builders and aviation enthusiasts. Today I want to talk about air compressors. Hopefully this video will help you if you're making a decision on what to buy or uh, if you're having trouble with one that you already have. This is my Harbor Freight 8 gallon 3 horsepower air compressor. It is an oil sump model and it's 14 years old and has served me very very well. It's been a great little shop compressor and I haven't had really any problems with it. I had to do uh, oil change and replace the regulator on it once. The only other thing I've done to it was to replumb the quick drain so that it was easier to drain the moisture out of the bottom of it. But that's it. It served me well for 14 years and the oil change that I performed on it enabled me to run it in cold weather because the original heavier weight oil was not allowing the compressor to function uh, in cold temperatures. So that being said, it gave up the ghost about a week ago. I was working on the horizontal stabilizer and drilling hundreds of holes repeatedly. I'd start off drilling uh, A3 size pilot hole for the skin. I would then, once I ratcheted the skin down and drilled an additional A3 pilot hole through the uh, ribs and the you know, structures underneath, I'd then go back with the A4 final hole size and match drill everything. And I got through one side of it okay and then uh, and didn't have any problems with the compressor. But a few days later when I went back, uh, flipped it over and went to do the, the other side of it, I had a little bit better pace going on. I was, I was drilling a little more constantly. And the uh, old Harbor Freight there started to smell funny. At first I thought I was just kind of reaching the thermal uh, overload protection limit, but instead it actually tripped the GFI breaker. And from that point on, the unit will not even turn on at all. It, it won't, the motor won't turn, the pump doesn't turn, at least when you apply power to it, it just trips the GFI as soon as you throw the switch and the machine itself doesn't make any noise. With GFI breakers and outlets, sometimes with older electric equipment or, or appliances, you can run into trouble where they'll constantly pop the GFI breaker after a short amount of time due to current leakage in the windings of the motor. That's normal for things like clothes washers or even these compressors and things like that. However, this one, it's it's a, it's a much different problem. I, I think I have a blown starter capacitor or the uh, motor itself is completely fried. Hopefully it'll be a cheap fix and I can repair this and maybe get back up and running on it and sell it or give it away or put it out in the hangar someday or something like that. But for now, I just don't want to deal with it. Furthermore, obviously it's just too small for this kind of a project. 8 gallons just doesn't cut it. You need a much higher capacity tank to drill these kinds of holes. Uh, this thing was kicking on about every 30 seconds when I was really going to town on that horizontal stabilizer. So, just isn't big enough. That's, that's pretty much the simplest way to put it. So, I went ahead and bought a 30 gallon Husky model from Home Depot. Husky is Home Depot's house brand. Um, this has a number of, I guess you could say, features on it that are conducive to a little higher production level. The pump here is still a single stage pump, but it's a dual piston, dual intake model. The Harbor Freight is all aluminum except for the cylinder sleeve. This model here, a little bit more robust design. I've already done the 20 minute break-in procedure on it. I'm gonna replace the current factory oil with the Husky Premium Synthetic Blend oil. And uh, that'll give me plenty of cold weather capabilities there without bogging the motor down. It's also a one, runs on 110, and this is about the largest compressor you can find that will run on a 110 adequately. Uh, and you get up into the bigger compressors and they, they require 220 volt. This motor can actually be converted to run on 220, despite the fact that the manual says that it, it is only appropriate to run it on a 110. The motor itself tells you how to wire it for 220 operation. But I'm perfectly happy with it being a 110 because I wanted a large but still portable uh, air compressor. I need to be able to go out and winterize my sprinkler system with this. I need to be able to winterize my travel trailer with this. And I want a portable compressor just for maximum utility. This compressor is $399 currently at Home Depot. They lowered the price from $430 down to basically $400. I think it's a year-end model clearance pricing. It's not on sale. I didn't use a coupon. They just lowered the price, but I think that's why. And then I paid $60 for the three-year... Uh, protection plan slash performance or uh, maintenance agreement on it. In deciding on what compressor I wanted to replace the old Harbor Freight model, I looked at a few options. I looked at Lowe's with the Cobalt line, and I also looked at Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight has a 29-gallon compressor that's comparable to this Husky, but it is laid out differently. It's plumbed differently. It has a different compressor motor on it, uh, or a pump rather. It's a single piston pump. It appears to be a cast iron and aluminum hybrid like the one on the smaller unit is here. 
And then the same thing kind of goes for the Cobalt from Husky, which I don't have pictured, obviously. But the Cobalt model, uh, again, uses a single piston pump. Looks to be possibly a hybrid cast iron aluminum pump housing. And just a different layout again. The, the, the Harbor Freight model and the Lowe's model appear to be nearly identical. They're not quite identical, but they're very close. Just the, the, the dimensions of them, the layout, everything is very similar. The Husky model is the only one that I saw in this size that offered the two piston pump. So, <clears throat> so that was part of it. I liked the full cast iron design, the two piston pump I liked, the fact that this is an oiled model versus an oilless. I'll go into the oilless versus oiled in a minute, but for price comparison, the Harbor Freight model at 29 gallons was $360 plus I think you paid anywhere from 80 to $100 for their two or three year uh, replacement warranty, which if something goes wrong, you just pick it up, take it into Home Depot, they give you another one, and you're off and running with a brand new machine. While that's convenient, I also am not a big fan of just simply throwing something away that can be fixed. And so I prefer the Home Depot warranty, which was only $60, and they will actually try to fix it before they'll try to replace it. But they will still replace it if they can't fix it and or give you a gift card equivalent to the purchase price. So not a bad deal for $60. The Husky factory warranty is two years. The Harbor Freight warranty on the larger model was only 90 days. So by the time you factored in the extra protection plans and all of that other stuff, I mean, these two machines were within the bigger 29-gallon machine and the 30-gallon machine here were within like $10 or $15 of each other. The Cobalt model, however, was $450 to start with, and then depending on which tier of uh, performance plan you want, you either spend $50 or $100. It's a two-year plan for $50, bucks, a four-year plan for $100. So I went with the Husky. The Husky was uh, the better price, uh, and I felt the, had the better service plan for the price, and it's exactly what I was looking for. Now, if you're on the fence about which kind of uh, air compressor to get or if you need to replace one and you're not sure what you want to replace it with um, highly recommend that you go with something that's at least a 21 capacity I'd recommend at least you know even 30 probably is closer to a good minimum there but even bigger yet like I said the 60 gallon uh, husky version of this one uh, it was only $80 more the 60 gallon runs on 220 only and it's a permanent fix fixture in the shop you have to bolt it to the floor you have to have a 220 outlet for it but it's twice the capacity and you can still further bump up to an 80 gallon in various other makes and models so uh, more capacity is better and uh, if you need maximum portability then this is about the biggest unit that you can get and uh, i really so far i'm very pleased with this now back to the oiled versus oilless models Oilless models are all the rage right now, at least as far as the retailers will tell you, and uh, they're no maintenance, they're maintenance free, whatever they want to call them, but they are disposable air compressors. I don't care what anybody says, an oilless model is not going to last nearly as long as an oiled model. So like I said, that Harbor Freight lasted me for 14 years, and I've put it through the paces in 14 years, and it took 14 years to break it. If it had been an oilless model, I would have killed it in a year or two. So furthermore, oilless models are extremely loud. Uh, this little unit right here, although oiled, is fairly loud and you don't want to stand next to it when it's running and you can't have a conversation with anybody while it's running, but it's pretty darn loud. The oilless models are louder still and really obnoxious. You're not really supposed to use them indoors without hearing protection. Um, even this one, you, you don't want to use hearing without hearing protection, but the oilless models are just really, really loud and ridiculous. Now, if we compare that to this twin cylinder one, I can actually have nearly a normal conversation with barely raising my voice, standing right next to this thing, and it's as quiet as can be. This isn't going to wake up my wife. This isn't going to annoy my neighbors like the other one did. It's extremely quiet. And it comes up to pressure very quickly. I've left the drain open uh, uh, in, intentionally here, so that's not a leak. But um, very, very quiet, and, and I'm just really thrilled with it. So I've already done, I think I mentioned before, but I've already done the break-in procedure, and I'm going to hit it with a synthetic oil and replumb the uh, condensate drain uh, so it's a little easier to get to. But that's about it. Uh, really quickly, quick update on the rest of the project. I'm nearing completion on the tail section. I've got the horizontal stabilizer is almost done. I've just got to put the uh, cut the holes and uh, ports for the mounting brackets and things like that, and then mount those and match drill them. And then the 
elevator skeleton here is already match drilled and clecoed together uh, along with the hinge pins. So um, I'm going to try to finish these two structures and get them deburred, primed, and riveted together here fairly shortly. Um, I've got a ton of video to cut together for the assembly and construction procedures on this, as well as for the uh, horizontal stabilizer, although I do still have some footage left to shoot based on finishing these up. Uh, but once those are done, I'll probably do another video on just attaching the, uh, the elevator, which attaches right here with the hinge pins. So looking at probably a four-part series on the stabilizer, a two- to three-part series on the elevator, and then probably just one short video for the assembly of the two structures. Now next up after that, my plan was to start the wings. And here in Michigan, it's the middle of October. We're heading into the cold season. I'm not really sure that I'm going to have time to do that. Furthermore, I still have to winterize my sprinkler system and my travel trailer and do some repair work to my travel trailer before I store it. So I've got some things to do that aren't related to the plane. But the big holdup with uh, starting the wings are going to be the fact that I have to assemble, fully assemble the wing spars, which the wing spar webs are up there, but I have to fully assemble the wing spars before I can move to attaching things like ribs and stuff like that. So the problem is going to be that uh, in order to fully assemble the wing spars, I have to fully corrosion protection them before I solid rivet them together. And I don't know if the weather's going to hold out long enough for me to do that. Uh, if it doesn't, that's okay. I still have the flap rounds to skin. I can still work on the slats. I mean, there's lots of, you know, match drilling and lining up and jigging that I could do on, on those structures as well as the firewall, which is sitting over there by the fence and the press. Um, I'm going to remake the rudder as well, like completely from scratch, remake the rudder. So there's lots of little things I can do if I don't get around to getting those wings, wing spars completed before winter but uh summer just got away from me i had so much other stuff going on i got hurt i got sick it was just you know it was nuts so but anyway those are uh what the future holds for uh coming up and um i should have a new video out to you here in a couple of weeks on the on the horizontal stabilizer so thanks for watching good luck with your projects be sure to comment and subscribe and uh we'll see you next time thank you